welcome to season four of the Penny Lane podcast with one of our all-time cult favorite classics, Carrie Palmer. This episode is just as good as the first one, and I'm so thankful to, have to say it, Nut Butter Falcon for joining me as the co-host. I, you know, I got to call him Chris because just got to do it. Season four, I am so excited to share the guests we have, some new ideas we have. We have all kind of cool YouTube stuff. So if you're not subscribed to the Penny Lane podcast on YouTube, please make sure you do that. We also are on Instagram now. We've got a TikTok. We're blowing up. We have some incredible new sponsors this season. As always, Penny's Going in Raw is a sponsor. We also have Aries, which is a great new broker platform that I've been enjoying using, and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. And for this episode, we have DTR Trading, which is an incredible room. It provides so much value, and there's a money-back guarantee if you don't like it. So I'm so happy to have partnered with everyone. As most of you know, I've accepted the position as Chief Marketing Officer of Tradewell. That's Tradewell GG. I hope you follow them on Twitter. We are just really ramped up for some exciting stuff. So enjoy, everybody. Please like, subscribe, share. Keep hanging in there with the Penny Lane Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Penny's Going in Raw, Aries, and DTR Trading. The stock market is hotter than ever right now, and traders are taking advantage. But what does that mean for the people who still haven't started trading? The market can be a little intimidating at first, but you don't have to be alone in the learning experience. We at the Pennies Going In Raw podcast are here to help you. I'm Dan, and with my co-host, Hugh Henney, we make the stock market a fun but informative experience for our listeners. We offer knowledge for all levels of traders, from beginners to those who do it full-time. On PGIR, we discuss up-to-date news about the stock market and interview other traders who all started out just like us and made it big. You'll hear from Hugh and other multi-millionaire traders, founders and CEOs of companies, Fintwit superstars, and even professional athletes. Have you ever thought about investing your hard-earned cash but don't know where to start? Do you have money just sitting in your savings account collecting dust? We were all there once too. Listen to Pennies Going In Raw on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Palmer, hi. Welcome back to the Penny Lane Podcast. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's good to be back. It's, I'm excited. I've got my coffee. I'm ready to go. It's a massive coffee cup. Also, why not why not hold the handle? Um, I, I don't know. I don't like to hold the handle. It's not. You, I feel like you don't get as much control from the handle. Yeah, here, give you know? me a I good shot that. of what it's like to hold the handle. Also, is there no milk in that coffee? No, no, it's Psychopath? black. Psychopath. Uh, it's mm-hmm. like a, it's an ex drug addict thing. I also drink my coffee black. Yeah, it's, yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah. You don't lighten black it. Black is nice. You don't lighten it. Thank you so much for bringing that up. <laughs> so, I'm very excited. I'm totally blindsiding you, Palmer, and I hope that that's fine. But you were so open about your addiction issues last episode mm-hmm. that I've brought on another ex <laughs> for this. Oh, is this episode. an intervention? I don't think I don't think either one of us need that anymore. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're past it. So, um, Peanut, I'm gonna. I cannot call you. No, just call me. Chris is fine. You don't have to call me Nut Butter or Peanut. It's all good. Thank you. Chris (laughs) is here because he came on, and toward the end of the episode, we got into some of his addiction um, issues, and it was one of the more impactful episodes that we've ever done as palmer you know that your episode is like a penny lane pod cult classic like we got Agreed. more honestly i it i, I think it's my favorite episode you know oh, that. I'm, I'm flattered, I'm flattered. Yeah, i just loved you so much in that make sure episode. you guys edit that out of the tape though <laughs> and you were so vulnerable and um anyway i just kind of wanted to get you guys together because chris your episode also i loved that's oh, i didn't i literally it's didn't not, even take offense to that you're okay it's not that i like palmer's episode it's better his episode's better <laughs> <laughs> It was a good episode. It was a good episode. And I've decided so much recently in the podcast that, like, 
it's great to have on really big traders. I feel so fortunate to be able to talk to everybody we talk to, but it's the life conversations that I really love more than like the trading conversations, and you guys both excel in that. And I'm a big believer that trading is life. It's all the same. Art imitates right? life, yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, Palmer, did you... Did you see that um, Chuck? You saw the Chuck E. Cheese thing I tagged you in with that. Yeah, I you know I didn't. I don't like to tell people like, hey, I've seen it, but like I got tagged about ninety times, and every time I was like, wow, crazy, cool, oh my sure. god, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's that's like a few years old too. When I was actively at Chuck E. Cheese, people would send me that. Oh, um, fat. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's really not in that bad to, of shape. It's great to know that people know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You're the Chuck E. Cheese guy. Yeah, I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, dude, this is another one. Look, look, <laughs> it's the same picture. And she was like, oh, yeah. But to be honest, like that, the machine is like just the skin looks really bad, right? The the cloth or whatever. But the actual yeah. mechanics are all still there. Usually when we get rid of them from a store, we have to saw them into bits because people will come and steal them from the trash. It makes right? sense. Yeah. Honestly, um, I and that. And yeah, well, yeah, people would steal them. We have one guy here has like the whole collection in his apartment. It's, it's a little that's concerning. a little creepy, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, the um, so I know that that one probably came from a, a warehouse or something. It might have been something a defect um in the machinery because they don't ever come together together like that. Um, but I was like, no, oh, if I knew where that was, I I can easily take that, put that in my garage. You know, who knows what I could do with that? Um, For but they have a, they have a legal. Yeah, they have a hard legal team. Yeah, they have a hard legal team. That they come after you. Uh, I posted a picture with, like, the head on social media once. I got called, like, 10 seconds later, and they were like, you better check that down. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> it's for real over there. You keep getting in trouble. <laughs> I, I got in trouble there a lot. He's a legal team. I love this. I love this. Uh, another life thing I wanted to talk to you about is the Breathe Carolina concert. Yeah. photo that you're in so are you were you in a gaming championship or what, what were you doing? oh no so this so you know this Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments have gotten like way out of hand there's like one every day now but the biggest one happens on on thursdays and um i made it to the very final round right so it started at like noon and actually when they got to town they were like hey man we're gonna be here and i was like you know what i'll just meet you a little later i'm still doing this Yu-Gi-Oh tournament you guys can relax whatever and, and we'll be good but then um, I get there and they're like, all right, you know, we do like Swiss. So we play and then I had the most points. So they're like, you're going to the finals. And, then, and I was like, oh, crap. I, you know, I wasn't really aware of that. So then I was at that their concert. And I mean, I'm like sitting in the front of this entire club venue. It's a big place. It was really cool. Packed with people. It was a really good time. But, you know, Tommy and David are like feet from me to the right. And I'm just sitting here like playing Yu-Gi-Oh on my phone. And there's like, you know, chicks dancing all around me and stuff scantily. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> trying to, trying to, and the connection was awful. So I was very slow and I lost, but I still won like $200. So we'll take it. There you go. Yeah. There priorities. You, go. you know what I mean? After that though, I was like, woohoo, glad to be here. But you know, it's a, we got the hierarchy of priorities and you know, that was uh, that was number one that night. Sure. $200 is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have won five hundred, but I lost. I'd like to blame it on the connection, but it wasn't close. So, <laughs> remind me, you live in Texas, in Dallas, yes, ma'am. Dallas, da ma'am. That's what we say here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the formality. Right, Dallas. Um, Texas is such a big place. I was just, um, I had to go. I'm doing this new thing with Tradewell, working with Tradewell now, and my husband said that I had to meet the CEO in person before I could sign a contract with him. He's very like old school like sure. that. And also he works for Delta so I can fly for free. So he's like, literally all this is going to cost you is time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he lives in Austin. So I took a day and flew. Well, I was like, if I'm going to be in Texas, I want to meet Dan. Yeah. Love oh, in Dan. Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I was like, I'll just like go to Austin and then I'll just like zip over to Houston. No big. I can do yeah. this all in one day. Oh, not good, yikes. not good at maps. So, but I was like determined to do this. So I was going to go to Austin and rent a car. And I think it's a three hour drive from Austin to Houston because I wanted to meet Dan. Yeah, about and something like that. 
the time just I couldn't quite figure out how to do everything so I ended up going to Austin having lunch getting dropped back at the Austin airport flying to Houston and then was able I was able to have lunch in Austin and dinner in Houston and it was fabulous but yeah like Texas is a big state oh it's huge it's huge I when I went to go get Lily um, I had to go get her from Oklahoma, right? So I was driving north from San Antonio, where, where I was raised. I was visiting my family, and they were like, hey, you got like a day to come pick this thing up. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, so I, <laughs> I hopped in my car. And it was like maybe midnight. And I drove like 14 hours. And like 12 of that was just leaving Texas. <laughs> it was just leaving. Yeah. They were in the panhandle of Oklahoma. And then I had to drive all the way back. And I got home, and I was like, oh, I hadn't slept. And I was like, I got a skunk, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And um, now you have another skunk under your house. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I saw that recently. Yeah, apparently. apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah, the dogs almost got blasted by him, but he's just a little guy. And I was like, oh, man, you better be careful, bro. I'm going to snatch you up. <laughs> we we got a whole gang going on in here now. Got a whole gang. How many an- have we added any animals to the arsenal? No. 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 Um, we have. Uh, we actually got rid of a cat. She was just a feral that was like we were fostering until she was well again, and she wanted to back out. So we let her back go after we got her vaccinated and everything. So we actually did two cats, two chihuahuas, and then just this weasel. Oh, well, that's nice. doable. Yeah, yeah. So we had three cats, and it was I was like, this is a little out of hand. Yeah. Um, and I'm allergic to cats, too, so it's like, eh. We, yeah. we just, I live on Claritin now, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> NBD. Yeah. Um. So, you want to go into trading? What? Yeah, sure. I like trading. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh. So, I've been seeing on Twitter, you're, are you doing a small account? Not necessarily. So, I, what I did was I was depositing money monthly into a, into a second account that I was like, well, I can use this as like an IRA or like a swing or a long-term investment or something like that account. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, I, just in the mornings, I felt I was like, oh, I'll just trade with it as well, just because it was it just like eclipsed PDT, and I was like, well, I mean, you know, you're over PDT, you might as well. Um, but I was like, I'm only gonna trade with about five thousand dollars worth of cash because I want to trade that like at the bell, and then I'll go back to trade in my regular account for the rest of the day, and it won't really uh, hinder my ability to to trade my regular stuff. Um, and then you know it was like green, and then it became after a couple of weeks, we're like, dude, it's we're running on a streak, let's keep going, and everybody's like, come on, so. So it became like a fun little game. Um, after the end of the, it got to the point though where I was like so focused on the small account that I think it was like costing me money because I was I would like focus on like only taking like really really good trades with this account with less size than I would with my regular one, and um, and I was so selective because I was like can't break the streak that I was like maybe taking a trade a day and I'm like all right well now I'm actually losing money because I'm, this is all I'm worried about. Yeah yeah. So I eventually liquidated it or, or I pulled it I reduced it back to PDT. He got from 25 to like 35 um, within two months or whatever um, of, I think it was like 43 days straight green. And, but I'm, I'm considering just because I know that a lot of people on, you know, on Fintwit, uh, people who are newer to trading or whatever, they like seeing that because it's a bit more relatable. And, you know, I think it's, I feel like a lot of times s- small account challenges or whatever, I'm not a big fan of because people are just like, I'm just going to full port. Yeah, every day. Yeah, I'm yeah. either going to double or I'm going to die, right? They're like full port zero and, DTEs, and they're just exactly. like, thousand percent, you can do it too. Exactly, and they'll be like, oh, I'm up this much uh-huh. for my account. I went from $800 to $5 million, but then it's like a single trade, and it's like, up oh, back to 300 or exactly. whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, mine was like, I make $60, $20, you know, $40, and eventually it was like, now it's 100 now it's 200 now it's 300 and it was very easy to see and very like obvious to see this. So I've considered, uh, I actually considered this weekend uh, putting that, uh, getting that account back. But I want to put it on cash because that's typically the the parameters that everybody else yeah makes doing sense. that that uh-huh. would benefit from follows. You know, they would be under that kind of circumstance. Um, so it's going to take like a week, I think. Like Weeble is not quick about swapping them. No, it's uh, funny though. Be real quick stage. about giving you margin, but switching back to cash. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're going to let this ride for a week or so. Yeah. yeah, so they, I think at the end of this week, I'll go back into doing that. Not necessarily to be like, you know, hey, you know, small account challenge, everybody come come do this with me, follow my trades or whatever, but more so just so that I can display the executionary element of like, I'm buying two contracts. Yep. Okay, $18, that's a day, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, if it's a $1,000 account, 18 bucks is a good day, 
you know, and because I think that as new traders, I, I fell prey to it was I was like, I just got to make $500 a day or I just got to make sure. $100 a day. And it wasn't it had nothing to do with like where I was at, what my trades looked like, what my account size was. It was just like this was this goal. Right. And everything that wasn't that was failing, which made me have crazy high expectations, exactly. which ultimately led to me losing a lot and pretty much the accounts. Um, and I think that that is something people want to be rich today, right? They, they want the lure of rich. The lure of being rich makes them stupid. And then when they fail, they're just left with being stupid, right? They're <laughs> not even rich. So, um, you know, that's what I always try to tell myself when it comes to small caps and small account challenges. Those are the two things that I'm like, just just take small W's. Like, don't get, you know, don't see people posting stuff on Twitter about, uh, I just made a billion dollars, whatever, on er earnings. I hate earnings. Um, so yeah, I, I think that it, it's fun. It's, it's a fun thing and, and it's doable, but I, I, if I got to choose, like give me my account over PDT any day of the week. Yeah. Chris, um, you and Bofo and I were just sort of talking about that. Yeah. Right. About, do you want to talk about that? Just like all of us have suffered from really good consistent streaks that then we overconfidence and then you lose you wipe out a Get big cooked. chunk of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oversizing yeah. too quick and whatnot and uh yeah yeah um a lot of that for me also stems from like impulsivity too which is a question i actually had for you palmer um after after my episode a lot of people reached out to me and asked me you know do i see a correlation between you know my previous addiction and trading um, and I do, and a lot of it for me is impulsivity and like managing emotions. And I was wondering if you experienced that still or did and had to overcome it. Uh, and if so, how? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely. So it's funny. So my mom, obviously, like as I went, you know, as a, being a drug addict for a lot of years, my family was kind of the, the people who were directly impacted. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and of course we're, we grew up very military and like my parents are both in the military and. You know, a very, you know, what they're used to is not the, um, you know, mental health, that kind of stuff being a thing, right? That just generationally, um, it was, it, it's it's a bit more current, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. um, nowadays. So, you know, they were kind of at a loss and frustrated and like, what do we do with them? And I went to all kinds of different places and things like that. But, you know, so they're very well familiarized now with the recovery process, especially my mom. Uh, she did like the Al-Anons and all that stuff. And uh, when I started trading, I called my mom and I was like, yo, I started doing this thing. And because my mom, like, you know, I kind of got her back into it or whatever. And uh, I called my mom and she's like, well, just make sure this isn't a, uh, you know, like scratching that itch kind of thing, you know, or, or, you know, because that's kind of what it is. Sometimes I, I see the correlation there and she immediately was like, well, just make sure this is not like an addiction swapping kind of thing or a. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she was like, uh, make sure that it's not like a dopamine replacement issue where um, you're doing this because it's like a, it's a high or it's an adrenaline rush and to be honest it is but there's some days where i'm like at 10 a.m i'm beat and i'm like this is not fun you know what i mean like some days it's yeah, yeah. it's some, some days that 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 surge of a of of anxiety is is not a hit of, it's not a rush it's just it's just draining totally. but um but i absolutely see the correlations between addiction not not just in impulse control but in the you know the first of all i'm thankful because as an addict with addict behavior um i when i do stuff i do stuff like i like overdo it i just it's all i care about i'm 100 percent, and that leads to like some good habits in terms of like studying and research and improving at something but when it comes to you know the the other side where i need to be patient and i need to, there was a lot i had to overcome because in small caps and stuff like that you know i was constantly chasing and i was like i need to be in something i need to be and it's like that that thrill control that I was very bad at. And now, you know, it, it's a lot of it has to do with the system. So to, you know, answer Chris's question about what did I do to kind of help curb that, that impulse control or the, the, you know, getting ahead of myself or sizing and things to that degree was I realized that I sucked at that. Um, I realized that I sucked at controlling my stops. I realized that, you know, I was bad at all that stuff. Um, I tell people all the time that like I'm the weakest element of my trading. If I can have the computer do everything, then the computer's not going to screw me because I I screw me. So I developed my system where like the the zone based system and the two five ten or whatever. All of the strategies that I use, kind of I built with that in mind. So it's like all right, 
This is very slow. Like, this is what it looks like when you're supposed to take it. This is what it looks like when you're supposed to exit. And, like, having it reduced to, like, that simplest form makes it a little bit more odd. Like, I immediately know, like, yeah, that wasn't... What the hell are you doing? You, you had, you know, taking that bounce off of an indicator is nothing to do with your strategy. You know, and it's right, right. very, very obvious whether or not I'm doing what I'm supposed to be or if I'm doing something what I call extracurricular. And if mm -hmm. you go and look at my data, my trade reviews, my journals, and you see the extracurriculars are, like, just getting t i just do not do well right and it's all yeah. like so that was enough data for me to be like all right just trust this one thing and just trust that and you know now i i almost turn off once i do all the work and i got my zones and i just sit here and i'm like playing angry birds or something and i'm like oh here it comes and we get in we get out and i think that also a body of work seeing it work out knowing that like yeah the system works or whatever it kind of gives me that that peace of mind because i know at the end of the day like i'm gonna have opportunities today i i do every day and that helps me know that like, I don't have to be scrambling for the next trade because if I'm not in it, I'm gonna miss it kind of situation. Yeah. Um, and I think large caps as opposed to small caps has helped with that a, a lot as well because small caps is very chasey. You're like running around, news, oh my God, this is moving sympathy, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the large caps is like, Apple's just gonna do stuff. So I'm just gonna wait yeah. here until it does what I want kind of thing, so. This episode is sponsored by Aries, the newest trading broker offering both mobile and desktop trading. The app is built for retail traders by retail traders, and they welcome user feedback. Do you ever nail the entry on a trade but can't get filled? You won't need to worry about that anymore because they are a self-clearing brokerage direct to exchange with TradeStation, and they are much faster than other brokerages that route through a clearinghouse. Aries is a multi-asset platform. You are able to trade stocks, options, futures, index options, crypto, and micros. You are also able to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies. Lastly, earn up to 5% interest on eligible crypto assets with no lockups. Aries has partners and offers many free tools such as Advanced Charting Trading View with unlimited charting indicators. Aries has partners and offers many free tools such as Advanced Charting Trading View with unlimited charting and indicators, free options flow, dark pool data, and many more tools on their roadmap to come. This is on average a $50 to $100 per month value, all for free. Finally, you can withdraw and deposit actual crypto and transfer to the US dollar and use it to trade any trading assets offered. Aries is the first brokerage to offer this. Please click the link in our bio or go to www.tradearies.com slash penny lane to sign up for an account today. Yeah, uh, follow up to that. So um, I know that you have like a great strategy for entries with your zones and stuff and you went over that uh, your first episode with, with Blaine. Um, I was wondering if you have a strategy for exiting trades or if you just let them go or where you scale or if you have targets and that type of thing. Yeah. So I'm primarily a scalper, uh, which I, you know, I always tell people and, and I have no problem with it because it's like always a scalper's market is what I say, but it's not because I like, like to be a scalper or I chose to be, I just like, I was, that was what I was, when I first started trading, I was like, yeah, this is about what I got in me to hold it for this long. You know what I mean? And I recognize that and was like, well, if that's what it is, let's just figure out how to do that as well as we can. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, what's your average percentage and things like that? And I'm like, I, I don't know, because I don't have the P&L on my screen. I don't have the percentage or the you know dollar amount or anything like that. So what I do is I'll enter my trades and then based on the chart, I'll try to exit it. I'll stop at a technical and I'll exit a technical. So it's like, you know, maybe a uh, where five minute candle closes or something and there's a couple of flat bodies. Like I'll just draw, you know, quick lines there. Um, and usually, you know, obviously that makes it to where you're not 100% aware that like this is exactly a two to one risk to reward or whatever, um, especially if you're playing weeklies that de decay and stuff like that. But in terms of, you know, just where I'm taking profit, I'm going to be like, all right, here's a, the, a, a major indicator. Here's a, you know, a major resistance level. Here's a, you know, major. And, you know, I'll just kind of scale out as I go. Um, and people a lot, I think it almost, almost, um, hindered by the like it's got to be 20 percent or it's got to be you know 50 percent mm -hmm. or whatever and i'm like i don't care what the percentage is you know what i mean if it's if i'm looking at the option chart and i bought it at 80 and it goes to 91 or whatever and that's where i expect it to stop moving that direction then i don't care i'm out you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. Yep, um, because similar. if it's going to yeah. bounce off an indicator or support or resistance or whatever then you know that's that's my ride you know that, there's my uh there's my exit yeah. And I think that that, is, uh, that has helped me a lot not be so fixated on the dollar amount or the percentage amount or whatever. If I had to guess, most of my 
most of my trades would be between like 10 and 20 percent max just and then obviously you get a few that you let ride and they go wild or whatever you trail your stop or something but the bulk of my positions are just you know scalps to whatever is the next major technical or where i expect it to no longer be going my way so yeah i've been doing this thing and i don't know exactly how smart it is but i've gotten like especially on my netflix trades this week i've gotten some like massive trades on that and i just uh sort of came up with this system myself i didn't learn anywhere but i will take let's say i take three contracts just because it's good for the example so i'll like enter the three contracts Mm -hmm. and i'll get three puts and then it'll go down and break the support where i'll sell like two of them and then it'll hold under that support and then if it like does then i'll add back two just gotta make sure i sell that premium content though (laughs) so um and then, like, I will just continue the trade. So it's like I'll still have my original thing, but mm-hmm. I will, like, um, just – it's like a new trade. Once yeah, it sure. holds under, it's a brand new trade. So I'll essentially be taking, like, three or four trades, but I will not all the way scale out. And I was talking to Shark, who, you know, is my, like, main mentor. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you're screwing your average. Like, that's the stupidest thing you can do. Is that true? Uh, well, I'm not going to tell Shark that he's wrong, for sure. But It's um, okay. He doesn't listen to the podcast. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Say whatever and you want. I don't <laughs> believe that. Um, I don't think that it's, it's you know, wrong, per se. Um, it, I like to add to my winners quite often, um, especially when I was trading small caps. And it would work kind of similarly to what you described there, where you would be – Let's say I, I took it from a, a level, it came up, broke above VWAP, kind of rested there. Um, I would take half profit there. And then okay. if it dipped back down, I would, you know, add what I took off. And then I set my stop at break even. And I'm like, now I basically guaranteed myself a small little win. Yeah. And if it stops me break even, so be it. But if I'm expecting that VWAP to, to continue to hold that, you know, I'm, I'd like to be back in. And that does obviously move your average up. And I think that in that instance, as long as you know that you have like a really good entry to where, you know, because if you're much closer to VWAP and you average up and it's like, and your stops break even, you're getting stopped out because it's, you know, right next to it. So I think that as long as you really emphasize like how good your your, your entry is and you're very confident, like, oh yeah, this will give me space. And I think that I can, I call it a free play where you take half profit, add kind of on a dip back and then set a stop break even, zero risk. Um, you know, sometimes it does stop you out and you're like, oh, I could have taken full profit at VWAP or whatever. But I think in terms of opportunity costs, I like to consider that, you know, pretty good as long as that entry is good. Uh, so I think that you're both right. You know, there we go. That was my, my cop out. (laughs) Uh, no, I appreciate you saying that. And I, it, I like the strategy only because I didn't learn it anywhere. And I'm like very stubborn on, I got to do my own thing and I got to like sort of figure this out for myself. But it will mess you up sometimes doing that because yeah. you'll, you know, you'll have a five or six hundred dollar profit that you didn't take, and then you'll close it out for twenty bucks or something. I mean, yeah. like that's, it, that's why I uh, removed the P and L from my screens because, like, it, until I look at the end of the day and see how much money I made, like everything is just imaginary because, like, it could go up, and I'm like. Uh, the worst loss I ever took was actually a win, right? And I'll tell people this all the time. When I was first started trading, I was I had no idea really what I was doing. I thought I was good. I wasn't. Um, and I was into, I can't remember what it was, one of these small caps going ballistic, you know, how they do. And I had like a $3,000 account, and I was up like two grand. And I was like, it's just going to keep going. I'm over here screenshotting it, you know, having the blast. Sure, sure. And then it halts down, and I closed like I immediately got stopped out after the halt and I made 50 bucks and I was like devastated because I just started trading and I was like, that was almost doubling my account. Like that was it. And I, it, I literally had that money and I was taking pictures of it. And I went to Chuck E. Cheese that day. And I remember just being like, this hurts worse than any amount of money I've ever lost because like I had it. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, that instilled in me two things. First, you know, don't be greedy. Don't be an idiot. 
yeah. um, especially on small caps. Um, but two, it was like, I, I can't be seeing that because that, uh, you know, I can't be seeing how up or down I am because that will affect my ability to play like what my plan is, which is the chart. Because my plan wasn't based on my PL. So to now incorporate that as part of my plan means that like, or obviously, you know, that's that it doesn't uh, it doesn't compute. It's it's not part of that process. So removing that has helped me a lot because now I, you know, I play the candles that I see, treat it kind of like a game and and less like a, um, oh, oh, shoot, that's 200 bucks. I'm exactly 200 red. This will bring me green to the day. And then it goes a bazillion dollars. And you're like, oh, wow, if I had just not focused on recovering from red and being break even and taking profit there, I would have been up eight hundred dollars today. So I feel like yeah. it really interferes in my process, which is why I don't like to look at it. At the end of the day, I usually once I look at my p and I don't trade anymore. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And you kind of have an idea for like, oh, I've taken this many wins or this many losses today. Like if it's going to be green or red and you kind of have can mentally keep track of like, oh, yeah, I'm getting my ass whipped today or like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm having a good day. Um, and that that is OK, but not having that strict dollar amount, I think, helps me quite a bit. Do you use like a, do you have like a defined risk, like a percentage or you just, like you said, just play the chart and that's just what it is? Yeah. So I used to have like a percentage. Um, and I think that when you're building a small account, it's important to have a percentage because it's kind of the process of compounding is that, you know, that percentage will obviously grow and so will your, you know, your risk to reward ideally. Um, so when I was trading like small caps, with like a $5,000 account or whatever, I'd be risking 2% of my account. So about a hundred bucks per trade. And I would always make my, I would always define a, my entry, a zone, and then I define a stop based on technicals. And before I even enter or anything like that, I look at it and I say, okay, this is where I plan to add. This is kind of where my average will be. And this is the technical level I plan to stop out at. Now, if that's 10 cents and I'm risking $100 max per trade, then I can take a thousand shares there, right? And set a hard stop and, and that's that. If it's 25 cents or whatever, obviously, I actually had this this little you know, Excel sheet that I could quickly look at because I was like, tired of doing the math. But, um, you know, it made it very easy in that instance to say, like, this is, um, it's 100 bucks. Like, if I'm cool with 100 bucks, like, that's the worst case scenario, right? And that made it easy to kind of, like, set that stop, walk away. It either, either works or it doesn't. It either goes up for to, to trigger your cell or it goes down to trigger your cell. <laughs> and, um, you know, so that was nice. But as I got my account bigger... Like once I got to about PDT, you know, I was like two percent is kind of a lot of money. <laughs> like you know what I mean. So I yeah. started. So now I have like a just a set dollar amount. Um, yeah. I think it's important to have a percentage growing so that you can start to incorporate bigger and bigger and bigger size and kind of ease into that. Um, you know, as you should. But I think it, once you get to a certain point, I think that percentage like gains on a day. Like I need one percent on the account for the day and percentage loss it gets kind of skewed because, you know, a million dollar account taking a 1% L on every trade is uh, my heart. Not okay. Die, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so once I got above PDT, I started doing like uh, 200 bucks max per trade. I think now I'm closer to like 400. If it goes to 500 per trade, I'm like, okay, I'm not happy with that. Typically I assume worst case, because the options are a little harder to figure out exactly, you know, where yeah, you're going to yeah. stop. So I will um, typically overestimate. So I'll say, well, I'm expecting maybe 20 cents on this contract will be around where I want to stop out technically. So I'll size with that expectation. And oftentimes it's like, oh, okay, it was 13 cents or whatever. And I end with smaller L than I expected, which is good. I always assume worst case scenario because the last thing you need is to oversize into NVIDIA and be like, wow, that was a dollar, not 10 cents. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And then it hurts. Um, so I do either that that perceived whether it's 20 cent stop if i'm in 80 i'm gonna stop out at 60 or that technical and whichever one gets hit first i'm out because that's you know i'm sizing with that expectation so um, sometimes you know i i miscalculate and it ends up being like way or down from where i expected but most often I, it ends up saving me a couple of bucks so you know we'll, we'll stick to it cool thank you yeah, yeah by all means Any more questions on that? I do not have any. Not no. not on that topic. No, he All right. answered everything I got. Cool. Um, Palmer, is there anything specifically that you would like to talk about? Anything you any burning desires you've been really wanting to get off your chest, trading wise, life wise? Um, you know, not really. It's just that you know, um, if anybody wants to money match me in Yu Gi Oh anytime, bro, just holler at your boy. Sure. Um, you know, I'll, I'll take you any, any person, any place. 
People people are like I used to play Yu Gi Oh. I'm like you don't you don't play Yu Gi Oh. Like I play Yu Gi Oh. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously <laughs> that's kind of my big thing lately. Is uh, I've been into that. But that brings me to my next point though, which is something I think is very 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 important, and it kind of relates to what we were talking about earlier about um, about the the patience, impulse control, and things to that degree. Is that I play Yu Gi Oh or Angry Birds or something while I trade, and the reason is not so that I can be like distracted or, or whatever, and I'm you know ADHD, you got to have a thousand things going on. But it's you know some one of the the biggest part about me, especially if you're full time and you just sit here all day, is I get my butt kicked when I'm bored, right? And that is the issue. If I have five zones on five different tickers and I, and they maybe get impacted once a day. You know, you break that over the over the course of a day, and that's like, you know, you're getting like a fill an hour, less than that even. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you do in that in that interim, right? Well, the longer I stare at charts, and I'm like, oh, this looks good. Oh, that's a pattern. That's a, oh, this indicator has been respected or whatever. The more likely I am to be like, mm, yeah, we'll just try that. We'll just yeah. maybe a little bit. We'll try, you know, we'll take a little nibble, and then it's like, you know, a few nibbles later, and it's, it's a chomp, and I'm, you know, like, oh, man, I got a hole to dig out of yeah, yeah. because I got impatient. So whether it's Yu-Gi-Oh or Angry Birds or something like that, I always tell people, if you're going to sit here all day, it's great to look at charts. Screen time, I think, is very important. But if it's not related to your strategy, obviously, you know, trust your strategy. Only do that and do that and do that well and nothing else. But also have something you can do. Like, I don't care if it's YouTube or, or you want to go, you know, talk mess on Twitter, um, you know, whatever it is. Just find a, some kind of outlet so that you can you know, channel your, your time and energy and, and kind of scratch that itch so that it doesn't result in you taking boredom trades. Because I think that that is an under um, appreciated, like those extracurriculars, they add up quickly. And if you don't review and you don't realize how quickly they add up or how often you get your butt kicked, that it's even worse because you don't know, you know, you're not really privy to the information that like, oh, okay, yeah, 70% of the time, this does not work out for me. And yeah. if yeah. you were, you probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, reviewing, trading, you know, th those are all small elements that I think will like up your game, you know, to the next level. They might not make you from bad to good, but they might make you from like good to better. Yeah. Um, you know, being patient, having something to do, reviewing your trades. Because uh, there's some days I look at price action when, you know, as it relates to reviewing, I look at price action uh, from that the end of the day. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, my zones were off by this much, but now that I'm seeing how this kind of played out, I totally see where I could have, you know, figured that out. Yeah, yeah. And if I don't do that, then the next day, you know, I don't know that. And I just make the same mistake. And um, there's a lot of times that what I see the night before, I'm like, almost have aha moments where I'm like, oh, damn, all right. Well, let me try that tomorrow. And then tomorrow it's like, oh, we killed it. Oh, my God, it was such a good yeah. day. And I'm like, wow, it's crazy that all you got to do is just go look at what, you know, what did or didn't work yesterday. And and make those adjustments. And I think that those, you know, patience and journaling or reviewing or in whatever capacity are two things that are like extremely undervalued. Mm -hmm. And I think that it all kind of comes back to people wanting this to be easier than it is. Um, where, you know, family, friends or whatever, teach me how to do this. And I'm like, all right, yeah. we, you got to spend hours reviewing. You got to look at charts. You got to, you know, and they're like, well, no, 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 no. Just, just yeah. tell me what to buy, you know, and tell me what yeah. to sell. And, yeah. and I think that that has, people who come into this without the experience, that's kind of what their expectation is. It's like, I saw a dude on TikTok said he makes a million dollars a day. You know, let's do that. How do I do it or whatever? Because um, it's not easy. I mean, it is difficult. And there's a lot of days while I was working that I stayed up late or I woke up early or I was, just, you know, figuring out how to learn in the, in the meantime. But it is doable, you know, if you survive. But it's, you know, just like anything else, like I think too many people expect it to be a lot easier than it is. And and that kind of makes them overlook some of those things that I consider necessities. Uh, not to plug it because I'm involved, but I am. Just Chill. really feel like Trade Well would be great for you. You can yeah, actually, track this setup. I did like it. I use yeah. TraderView currently. Uh -huh. and, um, but I I like I looked at you, you had uploaded um you had uploaded like a little picture, a screenshot or something. I yeah, like, oh, that, of what that I looked did pretty that good, did. dude. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And then there's another page where you can go in and literally like put what setup it was. And if you if you categorize it by the setups, you can see exactly your percentage win and loss on that particular setup, which I love. Because like in my mind, I'm like, I'm good at puts. I'm great at puts. And then I like went in there and started tracking, and it's like. 
no, you're better at calls. Like, yeah. you're much more successful at calls. But, like, in my mind, I'm like, you know, it's just, it is interesting to have that data. No pressure. <laughs> but I did, I felt like I wanted to say that. So, you know, anyway, no pressure. Yeah. 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 And, and um, but totally to that point, like, I, I've always been, especially on small caps, it matters even more there because you're typically trading setups and stuff like that. And I tell people all the time, like, if I told you that you, when you play bull flags, you have a 90% win rate. And when you play, you know, uh, breakouts, you have a 10% win rate. And when you play, you know, um, you know, inside bar or whatever, you have a 50% win rate. I guarantee you, you'd, you'd stop taking the 10% win rate. You just stop taking those patterns altogether and you'd size up into the 90 and you'd probably, you know, keep it even on inside bars or, or mm -hmm. you know, based on the setup of price action or be a little bit more, scrutinize it a little bit more. Just knowing those things would, would alter how you do stuff. And that data yeah. exists, you know, and like those are things you can find out. And, you know, the way that you do it is to keep track of it. I used to, I literally have these books here and they're filled with, with trades, like every page, because I'll say Tesla, 10 a.m., um, you know, inside bar or zone bounced or zone rejection or something like that puts. And then at the end of the day, I'll go back and say, okay, win, loss, loss, win. And then at the end of the month, I got like a huge amount of data where I'm like, oh, damn, I really do this well and I suck at this. And instead of being like, how can I be better at the thing I suck at? I'm like, all right, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, goodbye, you know, because yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's plenty of things to do otherwise. And, and you know, I, I stress it all the time that that data exists if you care enough to keep track of it you know, you, you can save yourself a lot of money um, and probably make yourself a lot of money. You might not realize, like you mentioned, that you're a lot better at one thing than you know, just because over the course of a day, you don't really keep track of like, oh, yeah, man, I've been killing it on flags today or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so I, I think that that's super important. Um, and there's a reason like all the top prop firms in the world, uh, the SMBs, the T3s, all the, the big dogs of like prop trading, they it's mandatory for all of their traders to review every single night. Like it's it's a it's a given it's a law basically and there's a reason for that you know if these dudes are doing it, it's because they know you know they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're the they're the big and the bad you know they're the yeah. millions of millions of dollars a day kind of kind of companies and and you know so if they're doing it there's probably merit hi guys this episode is sponsored by michael from dtr trading if you have not heard his penny lane pod episode I absolutely suggest you do that right after you finish this episode. It was amazing, and we've gotten so much good feedback from it, so I think you should do that. This podcast is sponsored by DTR Trading, the day trading live stream. DTR is a private trading group dedicated to helping you achieve financial freedom. DTR is the only room that offers the exclusive Traders Challenge. You will beat the market in 90 days or less, or you get your money back guaranteed. With instant Discord alerts, hedge fund training techniques, and live streams five days a week, you can start trading like a pro. Plus, you can get started for only one dollar. Visit daytradinglivestream.com slash join. Once again, that's daytradinglivestream.com slash join and commit to your financial freedom today. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm going to tell this story again just for people who don't listen to the podcast every time. Yeah. I had dinner with this Olympian who he was a, a mogul skier and he was in the Olympics and now he teaches mogul skiing. And he said that like there's such a difference between people who are naturally talented and naturally gifted at things versus people who compete and there are great athletes and naturally gifted people, and then there are great competitors. And the difference is competitors take very, very hard looks at their weaknesses mm -hmm. and then just focus on those weaknesses. Now, I think that's very different than what you just said. Like, if you're not a good breakout trader, don't, don't just focus on the breakout trader sure. part and try to get better at that. But if you do have all that information with the journal and your biggest weakness is that you're up, you know, 3% on your portfolio and you get bored and you take one more trade and lose everything, like that's your weakness, right? And journaling will point that out to you, I feel like. And that is so, it's, 
I got so much better when there was such a long time when I would trade that I would just hide everything in the back of my mind, all the bad shit I was doing and just be like, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And I wouldn't look at how much I was down or I I just was like, put it back there and just be full steam ahead. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. And the moment you have that I had to stop and really take inventory of what I was doing, it really became so obvious of like, if you could just stop this thing. Sure. You know? Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of points that, uh, uh, that, you know, the things you mentioned there that I, that I uh, quickly resonated with is that, um, you know, first of all, in, in like addiction and therapy and, and counseling and stuff like that, they, you know, there's a lot of merit to processing, you know, whether it be trauma or, you know, bad news or, or whatever. Right. Um, and that's why, you know, closure is important for people and things to that degree. Because if it's something that is, is, you know, festering or growing and you need to address it in order to progress, whether that's in trading or life or whatever relationships, you know, that it's, you know, they always say like, take a day, let it wash over you, like, you know, address it, figure it out. You think about it and like, it's easy to say like, oh, I don't want to deal with that and maybe it'll go away. Um, And that's historically never worked out for me, especially like in speeding tickets and stuff. Um, It just gets worse. (laughs) And... That is an issue where I, I think that, you know, having having the the wherewithal to be like, all right, I took a ass beating today and I need to face it and see like exactly what I did. Sometimes that feels good because, you know, you come out of the end of it and you're like, I know exactly what not to do tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and as it relates to the, you know what you mentioned about Olympians and things, I think that totally to your point that it's important when you're having to be well rounded or something to that degree to uh like for instance in basketball like if you're a great offensive basketball player but then you got to go to the other side of the court and play defense and you're like 90 offense 10 defense you're probably not going to see a lot of play because you need to be able to do both but in trading where you have a unique experience and a unique opportunity to be like there's gonna be just those things we're good at plenty of those in a day right so we don't have to be like i gotta get better at this otherwise i won't have the opportunity so that's why i try to you know remind people and that's something i had to teach myself because in small caps, where I started, you know, it was like, I need to be doing everything. And, you know, I'm worried that the way that these move, I might not get a trade today. But I, I realized that, like, man, there's always this pattern that I'm good at. at. At least once, as long as I look at it and knowing that those opportunities exist and being, you know, in the in the markets, we have that opportunity to only do what we're good at and, and, and do it fine. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think, you know, basketball, sports, things like that, if you have a, a flaw that's holding you back, like you're not in a position to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to shoot the whole game. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Um, there's, you're still going to have to play that other side. Um, and, you know, I think that there's merit to improving at what you're good at for sure in trading. Uh, but, you know, maybe do it, you temper your expectation, your size, things like that. Maybe do it on paper or whatever. Um, and, and maybe you get there. But for anybody who's like, can I just make a living only trading, you know, free bar plays or whatatever i have a 90 percent win rate i think you can i you know yeah, i think yeah. that those opportunities exist so i just think that's a little bit of the disparity there yeah for sure the um having or making myself post my p l every day you know there's there's a lot of opinions on that mm-hmm. some people love it some people think it's terrible like it's a hot button topic but sort of i mean you guys both know i think i talked about on both episodes about my own drinking issues having to like be honest about that is so similar to having to be honest about the trading because if I'm not kind if I don't post that and like really become accountable for that what I would do for so long is I deposited $25,000 which was like all the money I had in the world Mm. and then would go below $25,000 and then I would just like scrounge the money back up to get to like $25,005 so I could like trade the next day and I just had to keep like dumping and dumping and dumping money into that but nobody knew it I didn't tell anybody so it's just like this sick secret or whatever that I had um but I don't do that like I converted to the cash account and I have plenty of money in the cash account to do anything I want to do. So growing the account is no longer really that important, just mm-hmm. becoming like more consistent or whatever. Um, anyway, I, a lot of people have been like, just don't post the PLs. Like you'll, it, it'll be fine. But like, yeah. that's something that I really need to do just so I don't go off the rails. 
yeah. again. I, yeah. I agree. And I post it every day, too, especially because I feel like FinTwit, and rightfully so, like I'm friends with a lot of the guys who are, you know, very, very good, worth a, a ton of money or whatever. Um, you know, so them posting McLarens and stuff like that is is dope. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, yeah. The, I'm happy for my homies. But I also think that at the same time, for people who are new to trading, that they get kind of trapped by that or, or, or tricked. I mean, it's doable, right? Totally. And these people are examples of that. But um, I think that it makes you be like, damn, five hundred dollars. And I worry your trading on YouTube said he turned that into 10 million or whatever. Like, so I think seeing realistic P&Ls of the process helps a lot, which is why, you know, I post my P&L and it's like, you know, sure, it's, it's a lot of money compared to what I used to be making on my P&Ls. And I'm very happy with that. But I do that so like that I, when I do have a red day and I lose 800 bucks, people are like, oh, ah, OK. And, and it's not, you know, you don't go from I just started to McLaren's or whatever yeah. or, you know, private jets. You know, there is a, you know, OK, $200 a day, $400 a day, maybe $1,000 a day, you know, and there's that. It was that process as you build. And I think that I think that in trading and what attracts people to trading obviously is 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 money first. Yeah. Um and I think that with the when you come in with that mindset, you know, whether you looked at it on YouTube or somebody told you about it or whatever, you're like, damn, this is an extremely potentially lucrative ordeal. And I think that, that you kind of put yourself at that finish line or as opposed to, you know, where you should be. And I think that that uh, has a lot to do with people who don't last or people who fail or people who blow up accounts definitely contributed to, to my blowing up. Um, and, I, and I think that in trading, there is like a, a, a order of how you should do things where it's like the first you should probably trade paper and learn a strategy. I don't care if the strategy sucks or you got it from YouTube or somebody else or whatever. Learn it until you're so familiar with it that like, you know exactly how it works or whatever. Then maybe you can move into to trading with real money. But people are like, real money, I'm starting to start making real money in return. But I would rather see, you know, $5 green, $5 green, $5 green, $3 red, $5 green, a week of P&L of consistency and knowing, okay, I am net green 10 days out of 12 days or whatever. That's good. From there, you start moving to the, okay, now money can start being a factor. But I think that money becomes the factor right away. And then that's ultimately like the, the downfall is that you're not worried about the consistency. You're not worried about the plan. You're not worried about this. It's just a matter of like, damn, I can make a lot of money here, but that needs to be like the, the fourth or fifth step. And, um, you know, it's very hard not to, you know, kind of place the uh, cart before the horse, so to speak, because, you know, that's what usually gets you into being interested in the, in the, the job, I guess, for lack of a better term, in the first place, is seeing somebody flaunt gains or, or seeing a YouTube video or whatever. Uh, hearing about Robin Hood and GME and things to that degree. Um, and I want people to be able to survive and last and do it long term. And a lot of what has given me that opportunity now is, is you know, by tempering that expectation, which wasn't it was something I learned. I, I didn't start that way. Uh, I would have saved a lot of money maybe if I had. But I always try to liken it to like, let's say you want to get an associate's degree. You're going to pay however much money for a few semesters. You're going to put in two years of work. And at the end of that, you now have learned enough of a skill to potentially have a higher paying job. Yeah. And in trading, it's very similar. You're going to probably for two years pay money to learn. And, you know, at the end of that, hopefully have developed a skill that you could then use to have a higher paying, more lucrative job. But I think that, you know, the, that is a little undersold. Uh, everybody wants to say like, nah, dude, I can teach you how to do it today. And, um, you know, I think that that's unhealthy in terms of uh, in terms of longevity. For sure. That timeline will really screw with your head. Yeah. Like, I'm going to put in this amount of money, and in two months, I can have double this amount of money. That's, oh, yeah. that's not good. That was awful. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, and I tell people all the time, if I thank God I was broke when I started, because I would have lost whatever I had anyways. And so I'm glad that was little. Yeah, because yeah. I, you know, I worked at Chuck E. Cheeks, bro. Your, your boy was not stacking. They yep. don't take uh, tokens at Weeble, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> so I was... Um, you know, I had like two grand and I was like, this is how much I can, you know, afford a deposit or whatever. And I lost it. And then I was like, all right, saved up some money. got about another three grand. I lost it. So I had it down five grand total. And then I was like, all right, F this dude. I, I got like a $500 think of or think or swim cash account. Cause it's literally all the money I had left. And I went from trading, like, you know, YOLOing my account on every trade to taking like two shares of a small cap and being like, all right, $3, $4. And that sucks because it gutted me knowing that like, man, I had been 
making and losing hundreds of dollars at a time and now i'm yeah. making a couple of bucks and that was so humbling and frustrating but at the end of that you know i, I felt better about what i was doing all of a sudden yeah, money yeah. was no longer a factor because i had none right and i'm thankful for that because if i had lots of money it would have taken me until all of it was gone to figure that out and thankfully i started it started much lower than because you know, I see people all the time, they're like, I lost 100K and I, I'm down to my last grand or whatever. And I'm like, that would have been me if I had yeah. 100K to lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, sort of to wrap up, uh, can you please tell people who want to learn from you where they can find you? And then I also would like to know what your goals are for the, the rest of 2022. And they can be professional or personal or? Yeah. Um. Okay, so yeah, first of all, you can find me at um, at Cary, C A R Y Palmer, P A L M E R R, two R's, I believe, on Twitter. Just okay. at Cary Palmer. Uh, I think you can just type in Palmer, and if you follow traders, it'll kind of recommend me or whatever. That's where I definitely recommend starting. I, I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, a super big deal, so I answer DMs and stuff still. Like, I, I have time, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> in most cases, sometimes they're a little crazy. Um, but I'll never obviously ask you how your trades are going, so don't send me any crypto. Um, but the, the you know, from there, you know, if, if you're interested in, in discords or things like that, you can absolutely, you know, hit me up. But um, that's at least where you can start. And, you know, I'd be happy to talk, talk trading anytime. But as it relates to goals, um, man, I just like to, to continue being content uh, is, a, is a big one. I think that uh, I, I make like a, a decent amount of money to where I can, you do this for a job and I can you know, have time to play Yu-Gi-Oh and hang out with my friends. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean uh, I have live in a 1600 square foot house. You know, I'm not in a McMansion and I, you know, I drive a Malibu and stuff like that. But like, I think that there's totally reasonable goals on the way to like your, your bazillion dollar goals. And I'm very happy with just where that's at. And I would like to maintain that. Um, I, I don't want to put at jeopardy this contentment in exchange for like potentially you know, more and, 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 and more indulgence. Um, I think I'd, I'd be happy if this takes three years for me to move to that next tier of, of, of height, whatever, so be it. Um, the, I'm, I'm cool with where I'm at, which is something I'm very thankful for. Um, and I'd also like to, you know, win a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at, at some point. Um, your boy's always a bridesmaid, never a bride. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's ridiculous. I thought the Breathe Carolina was my night, but it wasn't. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's what I keep telling myself, you know. Connection. I, mean? I got another connection. one today, so maybe that'll change, and then I'll be good for the year, but we'll see. Um, what, about, what about you guys? What about you guys? What are your goals? There you go. Oh, man, just remain consistent. Uh, my P&L was much like a roller coaster in the beginning of the year. Um, found some consistency. I'd like to maintain that uh, through the end of the year. Um, so proud of you. In the Hell next yeah. month, I'm quitting my job and going back to school. So uh, just kind of, you know, stay sure. focused on what's important to me um, and just continue to move forward. Similar to you, Palmer, I think I'm probably happier than I've ever been. I've addressed a lot of big issues and my kids are good. I'm really proud of what I'm doing with trading. I'm so freaking proud of this podcast. Like, I feel like it can live on forever and ever and I've put – like my heart into it and um i if i could if i could make 50 bucks a day for the rest of my life and be, just be happy isn't that the goal yeah. yeah yeah i think that uh i think that tempering that expectation and and being mindful of where you're at whether you're happy with it or not and and you know getting to that point where contentment is the goal i think that it totally you know, private jets is not the goal uh, maybe one day that'll be a part of the process but I think that in terms of like ambition, uh, I just wanna I just wanna be happy. You know what I mean? Sure. Right now, we're looking pretty good. I got my skunk, got my coffee, got my Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. You know, it's it's good. You know, I nap during the day. You know, hell yeah. Yeah. Yesterday we. There's really um, not much more you could ask for. I had man. two soccer games. I had a festival at my kid's school. Then I had a baseball game, and got home from that. And both me and my husband were like if we could pick one day to live over and over, like that was a damn good day. And that, I mean, God, money can't buy happiness. Like, you know, what a yeah. cool, 
Yeah, I go to bingo, to dollar bingo nights and shit still. Like, I am no. not a, uh, a, a lavish guy, you know what I mean? I'm I'm totally cool with where I'm at. And, you know, I, I if I want to go to Popeye's right now, I can go to Popeye's. Whereas when I, you know, the life now is giving me that opportunity where I used to be like, I can't afford Popeye's today, maybe tomorrow or whatever. Like, I have a budget this week. And that is more than not having to check my bank account every time I go to the grocery store to know just how many groceries I can buy is is a more freeing experience than, you know, being able to buy a, a luxury vehicle or something like that. That I think that I think the biggest quality jump in quality of life and peace of mind comes from there. And then from where I'm at to the next step, I think is, is much smaller increments. You know what I mean? In terms yeah. of how how impactful it is, how much it means. Speaking of luxury quality vehicles, um, I drive an 11 year old four under that Yo, has, lit. yeah, it has a hundred and like 40,000 miles on it. And I love it. Nice. Like, I love it so much. I love a four runner, but I am kind of like, let's try to like, like keep this car as long as humanly possible so that the, like I can get an, another car. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm so content in this car, but don't die right now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just, we need to we need to keep on living my my girlfriend <laughs> has yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a kia that's 11 years old from the, the first the original green kia from the hamster commercial right and she, that was what sold her on it well when i met her years ago she was putting uh e85 into it like it was a hybrid vehicle or something i was like what are you doing she's like this is the cheaper gas and I was like, no, 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 that's for specific vehicles, bro. <laughs> so I, this thing still runs. I don't know how long it was like, please, <laughs> please, I'm dying. And, and she was, so I, 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 Kia really impressed me that day. But you know, now she's like, when this dies, I want another Kia. And I'm like, cool, she's going to run it in the ground, so be it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of people we are. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll replace it when it's need to. But as of right now, you know, I think that, I think what we got is okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think, so I said yesterday that, like, I'll know I made it when, like, I, I really want a Range Rover, love a Range Rover. It's like. Oh, the Evokes. Oh, they're so nice. Yeah. So beautiful. That's probably 20 years in the future, right? <laughs> Honestly, I'll really know I made it when my car dies. I can comfortably go and get another car. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. That would be... yeah, I had to replace my tires the other day, and I was like, all right, do it. And then I left, yeah. and I was like. Oh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Right. Oh God, replacing tires. Yeah, that um, sucks, dude. It sucks. Chris like is a mechanic, bucks. so I'm sure he's. You know, he. You don't have to deal with these things. You I get cheap tires, change. though. I was like, just the cheap ones is okay. Just the cheap these. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't go Any, anywhere, so I mean, I do that as well. Though, <laughs> yeah, I, so. Sure. Home. Sure. Well, guys, this has been great. No point. Both of you could talk to you for hours and hours. Uh, Palmer, I have a business idea for you. And you might already do it. I know you're TikTok famous. And I know you're a, skunk a gamer. Is, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So my kids watch YouTube kids okay. all day, every day. Yeah, mine as well. And, yep. Yeah. And there are people who just talk through like Mario Brothers and... Or Minecraft. Um, Minecraft. Yep, yep, yep. They're in Ro Minecraft. Roblox. Yep. And, yes. They just... Talk, like I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna dig this hole and I'm gonna get this into it. Oh yeah, uh, your voice is made for that. Oh uh, yeah, my my kid actually listens to a, a Minecraft person named Afmal where they like role play or whatever. And Wait, this girl's you have worth a child. Yeah, she's she's eight. Yeah, she's eight. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, That's where I made that face. Uh, that like, that a is a long backstory, and, maybe for the, and for five the third animals. episode. The third Palmer. The Palmer the I third had... Palmer episode. But yeah, yeah. No, when you said oh. yeah, I thought you were gotcha, just like Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You thought I was like, memeing like, on oh, you? Oh kids. No, yeah, she's literally kids. in the other room right now. Yeah, yeah. She's uh I know. People are surprised because yeah. I look younger than I am, now but I'm almost 30 now, you know what I mean? When you said um, mine too, I'm, I'm 29, like, what? So, um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had a, yeah. a kid when I was 20, 20 yeah, going okay. down to 20, 21, a few days before I turned 21. And, uh, but yeah, she's, uh, you know, it doesn't make, it's not surprising being in a house with me, but she's Minecraft, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and you're totally right. These kids make millions of dollars and millions. they're just like, oh, we're going to jump around. And they're like, you talk to each yeah. other. I'm like, hey, to each their own, dude. I, you know, I watch people play video games on twitch so it's just kind of a it's just a little relative i think and it's just that but, that's that's that variant for them for them i guess but you your voice has such good inflection and so much like joy in it like you could do this and you can yeah, that's do prozac. it better 
That's Prozac talking. Yeah. <laughs> you could do it better than these people I have to listen to. I'm always like, I'd much rather listen to Palmer I, do this. I, I think that there is no shortage of people who do that. I think that the big thing is like the discoverability and all that kind of stuff, which uh, it, just like a musical artist or whatever, you could be the most talented individual ever, but if you just don't get that that vision you know that that the, those eyes then it's you know it's hard to to be successful but if i get bored maybe one day i'll, I'll record one for you and send it send it to you you can you can demo it with the homies it'll Perfect. be my mix my, i'll send you a mixtape or something my kids have a youtube channel that's how dedicated we are to the youtube <laughs> yeah we're yeah. constantly on the YouTube. Yeah, I need to do that because my kid is on my YouTube. So it's like linked to, so I'll go to like look up a music song or something and it's just like, just like all these kids' videos. And I'm like, oh my God. If somebody came to my desk and they opened this up, they'd be like, what is the matter with you? Like they, <laughs> you know, they'd be concerned. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, if you do that, send it. I yeah, want I'll that. You know. I I'll, I'll hit you with the demo. <laughs> every single day think about you when those, okay. I'm like, God. I just wish that's unsettling a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd be so watched... good at it. You'd be so. And now we're jumping over the mushroom. <laughs> 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 it's that easy, folks. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been wonderful as always. I love you both. Thanks for being my friend. Hey, and... it's absolutely a blast. Thank you guys and... so much for having me. Yeah, love being in the grind with you guys every day. Such a yeah, thanks such for having honor. me. Co-host. Yeah, it was uh, it was a pleasure, guys. I'll see you for the next one. We we'll, we'll cover the whole kid ordeal then in in episode trace. So all right, all right, bye, guys. By accessing this podcast, you acknowledge that the Penny Lane podcast makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional or financial advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, the Penny Lane podcast does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. The third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of the Penny Lane podcast. The Penny Lane podcast assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compl- with applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.